He has such positive energy. It's just contagious. Nothing can bring me down. Ugh. It's I Hate Carly 57. If you blink for a moment while watching the new iCarly, then you might just miss these mega details. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going through the latest iCarly episodes with a fine tooth comb to find the biggest clues, Easter eggs, and nods to the original iCarly that this new series brings us. We're four episodes in, and already there's a laundry list of references and callbacks. While some are more obvious, like the Shea apartment, others are so subtle you'd have to look thrice. The show, which premiered on June 17th, was designed to grow up with the audience that had watched the original. Miranda Cosgrove, who executive produced the series, was keen on keeping some iconic facets, like the theme song while inserting some interesting nostalgia bait. Which OG promo pics showed up in the pilot episode? How does Harper give a big nod to the episode where Freddie and Carly first kissed? Let's find out! If you're a fan of film and television, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more cool content just like this. Now, let's get to it! Original iCarly Promo Pictures Although the pilot was only 23 minutes long, there was a whole lot to dissect. Freddie's divorces and sad current predicament, Carly's broken heart and Spencer's insanely swanky house filled up our eyes. Spencer's sculpture reveal party was a glamorously strange event, with gold leaf martinis and fancy servers dressed as casual guests. While Harper can't get over the hideousness of Spencer's latest sculpture, and Freddie is getting embarrassed by Miss Benson once again, Carly is chatting up her latest crush, Luke Tyler. As Carly and Luke start talking, you get a quick glimpse of one cute nod to the OG series behind them. On top of Spencer's couch side table is a promotional picture of Nathan Cress, Miranda Cosgrove, and Jerry Trainer. The three are all smiles behind a white background. Ah, the good old days. Wasn't supposed to catch on fire, was it? Never is. The pair phones and pair merchandise. The one thing we all wanted to know when we heard about the iCarly revival was this. Would pair phones and pair tech be part of the show again? Every kid dreamed of owning a fictional pair pad or pair phone back in the day, just as much as they dreamed of owning a real Apple product. The strange shape and silly parody of the popular mobile phone device was one of the highlights of the connected Nickelodeon shows. Well, they're back. While they might not have the classic wacky pear shape, the pear logo is clear on Carly and her friend's devices. Fans can tell that they're just iPhones with covers on them, but hey, it's the thought that counts. What? No. No, 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 no! Gummy Bear Decor one of the biggest reasons kids wanted to live in the iCarly world was the zany furniture sprawled throughout Spencer's apartment. This place had everything, from stuffed dash hounds in the ceiling beams to ice cream sandwich chairs. Besides Spencer's crazy creations, the most coveted items were the giant gummy bears randomly placed throughout the room. These delicious decoration pieces looked so good, you wanted to sink your teeth into them. Miranda showed them off in the promotional tour video of Spencer's new crib, but seeing them again was still just just as iconic. If only we could get some gummies of our own. Is this a gummy bear lamp? Yeah, I made it for Carly's birthday. Harper's bunny suit. Who would have thought that a bunny could be so suggestive? This silly suit first showed up in episode two when Carly had just finished filming a bunny makeup tutorial. Not only was Harper's commentary about Creddy doing a furry thing wild, but the suit also became a nod to a season three episode most fans won't forget. In the original season three episode, I Saved Your Life, Carly was wearing a bunny suit. Why? Because an iCarly fan had dared her to wear a bunny suit while asking people to brush their teeth for a dollar. Strange, we know. Carly kept the suit on and while they were crossing the road, she couldn't see an incoming taco truck, and so Freddy took the hit. This is the episode when Creddy was officially a couple. In the revival, Harper is wearing a bunny suit when they all discover Carly's biggest hater is in the apartment with them. Harper yells, I don't want to die in a bunny suit! Though this might sound like a random throwaway line, it's a direct reference to Carly's fateful encounter. If only they would let the Creddy magic happen again. <laughs> What kind of faux-pology was that? Faux-pology? Love! That is a perfect caption for me, bald face. Oh, totally! Supertastic sculpture of stuff. 
Many of Spencer's art pieces are a big throwback to the original. We all know that the bottle bot was recreated specifically for the revival, and we also know that there are references to Spencer's butter toast sculpture, but the biggest nod to the original has to be the supertastic sculpture of stuff. The new sculpture is exactly like the old one, except it's got a plus at the end. Bold move, writers. Bold move. This not only addresses the silliness of Spencer's past work, but it also makes fun of the revival, calling it the same old show with more stuff. Hence, the plus. Though Harper isn't a fan of this particular piece of art, the audience will remember that this work has got Spencer into the Jonas Book of World Records, which was also mentioned in the pilot. You do? Absolutely! It's about setting your old self on fire and then rebuilding from the ashes like a fiend. Skybucks. While we're still waiting for a return to the groovy smoothie, we can revel in the lovely Skybucks throwback, a parody of the highly popular hipster-filled Starbucks. This show's version of a coffee joint was originally mentioned in the Nick Produce series. It wasn't the go-to hangout spot, seeing as it served coffee and kids really shouldn't be drinking that stuff. This time, however, the grown-up cast often hangs at Skybucks, where Harper works part-time. It's also where Carly met her strange hater and even Nora Dershlet, who did an amazing job reprising the crazy stalker role. It's Nora Dershlet. Who's Nora Dershlet? She's a lunatic. She kidnapped us and locked us in her basement twice. Freddy made out with her. Carly's hater board. Let your haters be your motivators, right? Well, sort of. In episode two titled, I Hate Carly, Carly has to track down who has been leaving do better comments on her videos. While Carly has one of the kindest trolls in this particular episode, she's had a history with malevolent haters who can't get enough of making her life hard. The new series gives multiple nods to Carly, Sam and Freddy's past enemies. And while we're still waiting for Neville Pepperman and his tapenade to make an appearance physically, he's already shown up in the recent episodes. Come to think of it, so has Lubert and Mrs. Briggs. When Carly is trying to track down her hater, you can see Neville Lubert and Ms. Briggs plastered onto her stalker board. This might be a hint to future episodes where these characters return, but it might also be a quick nostalgia stir. Ms. Briggs was in fact part of the reason the icon Carly show started. Who could ever forget the roasting session Sam and Carly had about her pointy boobs? Whether Miss Briggs shows up or not, we can definitely see her hating Carly via comment trolling. Though, that would be bizarre for an adult to do. But what about Lubert? Chances are, he's no longer working as the doorman, but that doesn't mean he won't make an appearance. After all, his real-life wife, who played Nora Dershlet, was on the series. Here's hoping we'll see Lubert and his mole soon. Are you in there? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so this one was so viral that it became a meme for the second time. Originally from Drake and Josh, where Miranda played Megan, this scene gets reenacted in episode three when Carly finds out she's number one on trending after spitting out a meatball that was a bit rancid. While it went viral after the title sequence was revealed, it was cool to see that Millicent, Freddie's stepdaughter, did the same scene reenactment in the episode as she clutches her own soda. Now that is very interesting. It's probably also the closest we'll ever get to a Drake and Josh reboot. Well, there you have it. We're sure that as the episodes are released, we we will discover more Easter eggs that trigger our nostalgic side. Which clues did we miss? Which ones were your favorite nod to the original? Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and if you like this video, then give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. See you in the next one!